everyone. Meteorologist Mike Prianta here. We got another weather update for you. I'm joined with Mike Mahalik. And Mike, I must be busy in the office. We have snow on the way for some parts of, the, of New England. And of course, not the entire area is going to see snow. But uh, what do you what do you got for me? What's 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 gonna what's gonna happen here? Well, man, it's a tough forecast, mm -hmm. but I think Southern New England uh, is certainly uh, in the crosshairs for this one. Rain changes to snow early tomorrow morning, and uh, could be elevation dependent here. I, I mean, should not could will be elevation <laughs> right. dependent uh, for sure. Um, but let's go over to the forecast here, Mike, and see what we got going on for everybody. All right. Before I do that, I want to let everyone know, again, you can follow us on social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn. We're here on YouTube. Give us a like, subscribe, let us know how we're doing so that you can also see future videos when we, when we release them. And, Mike, I'm sure you probably know that we're also in the podcasting world, uh, Weather Lounge. Ah, we are. Yes, we Absolutely are. Absolutely, <laughs> we are. Uh, Myself and uh, Brad Miller uh, are the hosts of that program. A lot of good stuff there. A lot of good episodes so far. I think we have six or seven in there now. I think Even the latest is the Winter Outlook. Uh, so please, you know, search the Weather Lounge. Listen to the Winter Outlook video. It's a real good one. A lot of in-depth details for you. Right, Mike. All right. Well, let's go get into the forecast. We've bothered everyone enough with our advertising here. Yeah, so. I think so. All righty. So first, here's a <laughs> look at the radar uh, across the Northeast. Uh, one thing is to, to note is that big, bright band, I guess I already gave it away, but a bright band from central mm -hmm. uh, PA all the way into uh, Albany. That's what we like to call in the business where, you know, you have snowflakes that are melting high up in the atmosphere. The radar sort of intersects it, and uh, it almost appears that if it's heavy raining, um, but it's it's not raining. It's Well, it's not heavy rain, but it's definitely, uh, you know, some snow in the atmosphere that's, uh, that's melting before it gets to the ground. Yep. Yep, the radar just picks up a little bit differently, but what we're really concerned about, that's the first portion of the system, actually the remnants of uh, Zeta passing south of Atlantic City right there, but what we're really looking at is the upper level low, which is back towards Indiana, southern Indiana, and the Ohio Valley. Mm -hmm. That's what's going to energize the secondary low, kind of towards Virginia there, Virginia Beach area, and then kind of throw some more moisture back into the colder air that we'll be filtering in. Um, so that's that's our real player that we're looking for for this wintry weather. Right, right. So uh, we'll take a look at some uh, computer models and see what we're looking at here in terms of snowfall. So again, this is going to be tonight. Notice uh, there's our you know, there's our coastal low Zeta, which is, you know, now moving off. Um, this is about uh, 8 o'clock tonight. You notice there's some snow starting to mix down into the Cats Catskills, the, the high elevations. Not, it's not quite the Catskills, but up into uh, Vermont, New Hampshire. We keep uh, thumbing forward here and notice that uh, the second little disturbance that you mentioned, Mike, uh, comes mm -hmm. across, starts to kind of energize here, and you get the high yeah. pressure of the north, cools things down, and then you notice... Now we got more snow popping up here, and it actually gets a little bit farther south, even into Jersey, uh, Connecticut, all of Massachusetts, mm -hmm. even the Poconos. But uh, it seems like it probably will stay north and west of the 95 corridor, um, at least during the morning. And then it looks like uh, most of New England gets uh, that snow later in the morning, and then it starts to you know pivot on out, and uh, we have a nice drier second half of the day. Yeah, so this is a little bit of a change from yesterday. Yesterday, it was a little bit more suppressed to the south. We weren't getting such a, a secondary low developing. Um, so that's why now, with the more of a secondary low getting started, we're having more of a, a shortwave upper-level trough, we like to call, that's kind of digging into the system and energizing it. So that's why we're getting more development on the coast. Um, so this is what's causing more moisture to break out. It's bringing in colder air on the northwest side of this system too. And and like Mike said, you know that's that's what we have going on. But it's not the only player um, because some things are saying it's going to be a little bit warmer here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is the Euro basically going through uh, the morning here. Now notice it, it it likes to bring in a little more of the warmer air there, and it's actually act uh, mixing in a lot of that yeah. purple is more of a, not just snow, but maybe some sleet in there, maybe some rain mm -hmm. in there, um, more of the colder air back to the north and west. But I think, you know, Mike, the, 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 the idea here is that uh, there's definitely going to be some wintry weather uh, on the interior. Now the warmest model, this isn't the warmest model, in fact. Actually, the Euro has been quite cold for the past couple of runs. Um, mm -hmm. the, the Canadian actually takes the cake here in terms of the warmer solution here. This is through uh, tonight. Notice there's Zeta going off on by. There's a second mm -hmm. disturbance coming in from the uh, the, the Midwest uh, in the morning. And notice there's that blue starting to pop up, but, uh, Mike, it's not as robust. Notice most of the Hudson Valley, the southern Hudson Valley, still in that green. They're not as cold. Even in Massachusetts, yeah. not too bad. 
Uh, so this is definitely a warmer solution. It's not out of the realm of possibility, but it's definitely yeah. a, a solution that we have to uh, keep keep in mind. Yeah, it's interesting uh, that it's a little bit warmer. Typically, I, I think this is the, the Canadian global model, um, but even the, uh, the Canadian regional model, uh, we like to call the RGEM, um, is um, a little bit warmer too, which is usually more on the cold side with wintry yeah. systems. So that's kind of interesting um, that it's a little bit warmer there, but more of the model consensus is saying it's going to be on the colder side um, of the situation. So we got to take into account all modeling out there. So we're not going to go fully off the deep end mm -hmm. with those big snowfall amounts shown on some modeling. Yeah. Uh, so we're kind of going to just kind of favor um, away, you know, a little bit from that, just because we do have some warm models out there. And and, um, and this is and Mike, this is exactly what you were talking about. These are the big yeah. numbers that these models always love to print out. I mean, right. you know, it, it's printing out like six to eight inches interior. I mean, it's printing out like you know yeah. four inches in Northern Jersey. I mean, three yeah. in Boston. Uh, this is going to be tough, especially in Boston. Three inches is going to be very tough to to get. Uh, I think interior areas yeah. definitely a few inches, but uh, you know, I think the Euro is a little bit more. Uh, more realistic in a way, maybe a little too overdone still in, in New England, but in the southern areas toward mm -hmm. the coast. But still, I think the idea here, Mike, is that uh, areas that see snow uh, probably can see anywhere from, what, a, a dusting, maybe a few tents, uh, and then interior shots that say colder, closer to more of that upper-level forcing. Um, you probably are dealing with uh, maybe a few inches of, you know, on grass and on cars, and, uh, mm -hmm. but, uh, but, you know, nothing, nothing, too, uh, nothing like 2011, if you remember that storm. Oh, no, no. I mean, there was two feet in places of uh, Massachusetts. Uh, We're not going to get two feet out of the storm. It's uh, just and not and that's possible. certainly not in the cards. The system's moving way too fast. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not as strong of a system either. Um, so uh, that's not going to happen. But even on that Euro map there, there's, you're, you're seeing like two-inch amounts uh, in downtown Hartford. I think what's happening here is the model's picking up on uh, that mixing, but it's just saying it's all snow. Uh, for this snow map, whereas it's not taking away um, some of that mixing. So really, you might want to cut like about an inch off what the it's showing there. So really, downtown Hartford, you're looking at maybe a coating to an inch at best. You know, if you're going to get to the two, three inch amounts, you're going to go into Litchfield County. Uh, you're going to go to Tallinn County, and you're going to have to get into central Massachusetts towards Worcester uh, and areas uh, to the northwest of Boston. That's where you could see that one to three inch um, snowfall out there. And then, like Mike said earlier, areas near the coast, probably just going to see some flakes, maybe a scattered coating on the grass, but that's about it. I mean, look, it's early system. Uh, it's early storm. Um, it comes uh, most of the snow during the day here too. Um, so that really plays against a lot of accumulation with a late August, a late October storm. I'm still thinking summer. Wow, you're still in the summer <laughs> mode, Mike? Come on. August. It's almost November. I, I mean... know. I'm stuck. <laughs> <laughs> All righty, Mike. Well, I think you said a lot here and, uh, you know, a lot of good words there, obviously, uh, with, with this system. Um, but uh, let's just let's dive into some of the maps here just to kind of uh, sure. show exactly what we're dealing with here. So um, so really, um, this is what we're looking at. Lots of rain tonight still could still be a soaker in spots along 995 uh, gets a little lighter out west as the system starts moving on north and east. But again, notice that blue the temperatures start to really uh, fall here in terms of areas mm -hmm. that start seeing the, the snow mix in um, going into tomorrow. Again, more of a wider area. We're taking that solution of more of the NAM Euro blend. We're kind of saying no to the Canadian right now. I think it's a little too warm, as we mentioned. But again, it's totally possible that some areas end up a little bit warmer and don't see as much snow as, you know, like in Northeast PA and maybe the, the Southern uh, Connecticut Valley. Um, yeah. but, uh, but otherwise, rain in the 40s uh, and yep. then in the 30s in areas that, uh, that see that snow. And like we said, keep in mind this changeover is going to be early in the morning. It's going to be around daybreak for a lot of areas uh, from you know the Hudson Valley through uh, uh, central Connecticut over towards Boston. Um, you know, so uh, it really isn't going to impact rush hour that much because I don't think the snow is going to be all that heavy initially. Um, you know, you're probably going to just melt back on pavements a lot. There could be some moderate bursts in there in the morning hours. Um, but, uh, it's still going to have to do a lot of work. And, uh, I think you're going to have to be at elevation here if you really want a good deal of snow. Um, like I said, if right. you get up to, you know, 600, 700, 800, a thousand feet, something like that, 
um, you're probably going to see a good amount of snow from this system. Right, of course, Mike. Um, but it should be out, you know, out in the morning, maybe lingers a bit in the afternoon across, the, you know, southern New England. But uh, but then by the evening, Mike, next thing we have to mm. talk about, we'll talk about it quickly here, but uh, the cold air, uh, the coldest air we've probably seen so far uh, since since the beginning of the year. Um, temperatures across the I-95 in the low 30s, New York, Philadelphia, right around the freezing mark as you go north and west. Clearing skies, everyone bottoms out in the low to mid-20s. Uh, the warmest spots, obviously, near the nation's capital, 36, and you know maybe for Pittsburgh, a little bit warm. But either way, a chilly evening, feeling like like winter, not August, Mike. <laughs> yeah, no, no, definitely not. No. Um, and, and one last little caveat to this storm: depending on how long that snow and and snow showers last behind the system. Mm -hmm. There could be some black ice concerns, especially once you get towards eastern Connecticut, Rhode Island, yes. eastern Massachusetts, um, because with those temperatures falling into the 20s, if we don't get everything to dry out all the way, there could be some patchy ice. Um, so something uh, to kind of keep in mind. It sounds almost like December. I know. In October. I know. I know. But uh, you know, it, like I said, it's it's a it's a winter preview in a way. I mean, we're not going to mm -hmm. see this for the next few weeks. We're probably going to warm back up a little bit. Um, so you know, don't don't think this is going to be around here for a while. We're going to start to warm back up, and maybe we'll see. Actually, could probably see some snow showers um, uh, on Monday uh, with another little uh, upper level system that comes in. But uh, maybe yeah. we'll talk about that next week. But Saturday, yeah. beautiful weather on the cool side, a little bit breezy, but overall a beautiful start to the weekend so yeah. mike that's all i got i know we wanted to go a little bit more but we've already ran pretty long here so i want to yeah sure want to no cut problem. it short we've talked about the storm and uh hey guys thanks for if you guys have stuck around you know till now uh you know thanks for sticking uh, to our video or weatherworks your weather experts and again uh you know follow us here on youtube subscribe so you don't miss out on future episodes we'll see you again next week <laughs>